Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sotheby's. Our panel discussion today is entitled Necessary Pictures, uh, a conversation about collecting the Americans. My first question goes out to Ruth. What was it about Robert Frank and specifically the Americans' images that appealed to you and Jake as collectors? Each image, whether it's the Robert Frank of the 4th of July or Motorama or the dead body, whatever it is, each one speaks to you individually. Yeah. You know, they have a story to tell. And you think that it's an easy story because it's straight on photography, but it isn't an easy story. But as a whole, it tells you of a particular moment in time. When we look at Robert Frank's photographs today, we're seeing them differently than they were originally perceived. We see them differently today because we're, we've accepted it. We're used to yeah. it. This is what everyone um, is capable of doing uh, today now with your iPhone. Robert's pictures were not really that much different than anyone else's. There were other people who were using grain and blur and tilt of the camera and so forth. But what was different about Robert Frank was that he put it together into a very strong statement in the book. And when the book came out, there was an enormous reaction to it. Um, the whole photographic press pretty much came out. There was never happened before or since, all saying that this is a terrible thing, it's anti-American and so forth. And then through the 60s, it became something of a cult book. And by the end of the 60s, it was republished. It was a whole new generation that had discovered it. And I want to move on to Ralph. One of the things Robert did was his, his virtuosity in camera handling. And I still think he was a best camera handle of all time. We were filming conversations in Vermont and I was the cameraman. I worked with Robert on a number of projects. I was pushing 30 and uh, he had just uh, gone into film and I had my Leica with an M, it was an M2 with a 28 lens and it was, we were out in the field and he says, you think you're pretty good with that camera, I'll show you one you don't know. So he set the self timer, bzzz, he threw the camera up in the air, we all looked up, took our picture, and he caught my camera on the way down. <laughs> my camera. Well, what this really reveals, what this really reveals, in addition to being a clever anecdote on a panel, is an attitude towards camera handling and the nature of gestural, as opposed to, you know, if you look at his very early work in Switzerland, he was on a tripod on a view camera. As Stuart mentioned, the, the meaning of the content has changed. I, I believe after 30 years of photography, it might have started for a socio-political reason, now it becomes a socio-anthropological reason. What is he like as a photographer on site? Did, how did he choose the places he went to? How intentional was it? We were in Mexico, and we'd go into a marketplace, and he could take two paces in and disappear. He really knew how to, how to just completely blend, just become amorphous in a space. And I think that's, that's pretty evident also in the Americans. Stuart, one of the things about the, the sequencing of the Americans, he punctuates mm -hmm. his sequence with symbols. There's something that people always talk about, the whole American flag, no, nobody had really used it quite exactly that way, and why are there so many American flags? And you ask Robert why, and he says, well, I like that graphic symbol, you would see it everywhere. Well, I was thinking, why do you see it everywhere? Well, it was the 10th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. It's very common if you travel across the United States by car and go through small towns, they all have flags up, whether it's at the public yeah. library or it's at the courthouse. The flag is still there. And I see it even more here, yeah. that each particular image has a story to tell. In a powerful book where the, where the sum equals more than the total of its parts, the Americans continues to resonate, uh, unlike any other photography book before or since. It will probably go down as the greatest photography book of all times. Mm -hmm.